Hi everyone, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloryTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at nomenclature. Now nomenclature is the naming of compounds, uh, in, particularly in organic chemistry. So um, we're actually going to, that's what we're going to look at in this video, but this video only looks at um, molecules with no functional groups. So in other words, what we've got is just hydrocarbon chains um, with some branching and we're going to name them as well. We're also going to look at what IUPAC is and look at some um, basic rules uh, that allow us to name these molecules. Now, obviously this is very, very important, but it can be a bit tricky and you've got to really watch out for um, the molecules and make sure you're numbering them properly and naming them properly as well. So, we're just going to start with what IUPAC means. Um, IUPAC, you might see this on the exam, you might say give the IUPAC name um, of this molecule, and IUPAC it basically stands for the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. Um, and this is the, um, the body that effectively governs how um, chemicals should be named. And they come up with a set of rules. Um, and it basically just means that it's an international standard. So it doesn't mean where you go in the world that um, the names of molecules are actually recognized globally. Um, and so this is like a global rule book for chemistry. Um, and there's a set of rules as well that you have to follow when you're naming molecules. And so I've got them written down here. Um, and some of the rules will apply to um, some molecules, but not to all. So it depends on what the molecule is, and, and that's the intention of this video is to go through them. So we're just gonna go through very quickly these rules um, and show you kind of how they work. But what we're gonna do, the first thing you should do is you should count the carbons in the longest continuous chain. So um, when you get a hydrocarbon molecule, that's the first thing you should do is count the carbons. Um, you're then gonna find the functional group if there is one, um, and make sure, um, make sure that you actually name it properly, but in this case we don't have any functional groups. Um, there is a video where we look at nomenclature with functional groups, so if you just click on the link below uh, and you can watch that one. Um, once we've done that, we then have to number the carbons in the longest chain, uh, and we actually have to make sure that of any branches that are in the molecule, like the ones I'm going to show you here, um, that they have the lowest number combination. Now I'll explain what that means later when we do a molecule. Uh, so write the number of whole, uh, write the number where chain where chains and functional groups are, uh, and then you put them before prefixes and suffixes. Um, so again, we'll we'll come on to that um, in a minute as well. And um, chains are written in alphabetical order. And if we have more than one identical chain, then we use di, tri, or tetra, which again we'll come on to. And all these rules, um, apart from the ones to do the functional groups, we'll we'll see how they can be applied. Now the first thing. And um, before we actually start naming them, is to know what our what we call our roots are um, of a molecule, and you need to know your roots. And um, these are basically these prefixes here. So we have, depending on the number of carbons in our molecule, depend on how we actually um, or what root we have in our molecule. So we have one for meth, and um, two is eth, three is prop, four is bute, five is pent, six is hex, seven is het, eight is ox, nine is non, and ten is dec. Now, these are the um, prefixes for a root molecule. So, for example, if you had um, a five-carbon um, five, five molecule and uh, there was no branching and it was just all of it was hydrogen, then that would just be called pentane, provided there's no double bonds. So, pent is the prefix, um, and because it would just be a standard alkane, you just put ane on the end of it. If, for example, you had prop and you had a double bond in there, then that would be called propene, um, because it would have ene on the end. Again, if you're not sure on the functional groups, um, there is a video on functional groups as well. So if you just click on the link just below, uh, and you can see the videos on the different functional groups that you need to know for AS chemistry as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to start and look at some of these molecules and decide what they're called and use the rules. And hopefully by going through examples, um, this is the best way of actually trying to understand how you, how you actually name these things. So we'll start with this one first, right at the top. So you can see we need to count the number of carbons in the longest continuous chain. So in this case, we put our finger on the start here, and basically the longest chain is the most number of carbons that your finger can pass without taking your finger off the page or going backwards. So in this case, this one's very straightforward. So we start from here, we've got one carbon, two, three, four carbons in a row. There isn't any more carbons, there's no branching on this at all. So um, this is just a straightforward um, butte, and then it's ane because we have no double bonds, all single bonds, no branching, no functional groups. So this is straightforward butane. So we'll put that on there. Okay, 
So that one's straightforward. Now, if you look at the next one, if I just put my hydrogens on there, um, this next molecule might look different to the one that you've actually just drawn. Um, it looks like a, well, it looks like an L shape. And you might think, well, that must be a different molecule because it's bent in a, in a different way. But actually, if we follow this rule, count the carbons in the longest continuous chain. So that is, we put our finger on, and it's the longest chain that we can go along uh, without taking our finger off or going backwards. In this case, it's one, two, three, four. And that one is actually exactly the same as this one over here. So we just call that one butane as well. And I think what you've got to look out for is the fact that actually just because it might look differently visually, um, the actual molecule is exactly the same. And the longest continuous chain is the same in both. So both of them are called butane. So don't fall into that trap. The next one, if you look at this one here, this is our first uh, molecule with a branch in it. And we can see here that we have our molecule here and we have a branch that's actually sticking up from it. So we're going to follow the same rule. And the first thing you should do is, again, count the numbers in the longest continuous chain. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, or you could go one, two, three, four, five. So it doesn't really matter. Either way, you're still going to get the same answer. Just for simplicity, I'm just going to use this chain here, which is the longest one here, and count this as a branch. So our longest chain is actually pent. So it's five, one, two, three, four, five carbons, which means it's going to be pent. We then look, find the functional group. We don't have any functional groups in here, so we can skip that one. Um, number the carbons in the longest chain and number them from the side where the functional groups and uh, branches have the lowest number combination. Now, what we mean by this is that we have to number our core chain, which is this bit here. So we can start from this side and we can go one, two, three, four, five, um, which would make this branch hanging off the fourth carbon. Or we can number it from this side where we have one, two, three, four, five. And actually, by numbering from this side, that means that this branch is hanging off the second carbon. Now, obviously, it doesn't take a math genius to work out that two is lower than four. So actually, the numbering system that we adopt is from the right-hand side, because that will give us the lowest number combination that we can see there. And this, this is our group is hanging off the second carbon. OK, we then write the number where the chains and the functional groups are. So we can see that we've got a two, and hanging off that, we have a methyl group, because that's one carbon. So it's a methyl group hanging off the second carbon on there. Um, and then what we do is we then write down what the answer is. So in this case, we do two. We start off with the number first. So we always put the number before the actual prefix or the suffix. So this one is going to be two. So we're going to write that there. And we separate numbers and letters with a dash. So this is going to be two, and we've got a methyl group hanging off there. So that's two methyl. Uh, and then what we have is our core, one, two, three, four, five. So that's just pentane. There you go. So what we've done is we've separated our number and letters with a dash. So that's really, really important. Right, if we come on to the next one, um, we have, we've got to try and find our longest carbon chain like we were doing before. So we'll start from here, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or we could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you could go that way as well. So either way would actually give you the same answer, so it doesn't matter. But again, for simplicity, <coughs> for simplicity, we're going to start with uh, actually numbering these ones here. So this will take this one as our longest carbon chain. And then once we've done that, again, we don't have any functional groups. But we do need to number our carbon, uh, our carbons from there. So we can either number from this side and do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or we can number from this side, which leaves us with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now you can see actually numbering from this side um, is actually a better system. It gives us the lowest numbers. So this is one, two, three. That would give us a three. So I'll put that there. Uh, and four, five, that one would give us a five because we've got our two groups. We've got this group and this group hanging off the third and fifth carbon. If I numbered it this way, one, two, three, four, five, six. Four plus six would give a bigger value than three and five. So we have to number it from 
this direction here. So I'm just going to put our numbers on there. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And then what we do is we then look at where which groups are actually hanging off these numbered carbons. So we can see we've got a ethyl group hanging off the third carbon. So it's there. And we've got a methyl group, which is this one here, hanging off the fifth carbon. Now, because we have two different groups, we actually have to put these in alphabetical order. So you can see on the fifth step here, chains are written in alphabetical order. So you need to make sure that we do have two different groups. So you put these in alphabetical. So we start with the ethyl first, then the methyl. We don't put it in numerical order. We'll always put it in alphabetical. So this is how we're going to start it. Start it. We're going to start with the number. Ethyl comes before methyl, so E for M. So what we do is we look at that number and we're going to put three. Uh, we've got an ethyl group hanging off there, so it's going to be ethyl. So it's three dash ethyl. We then have off the fifth carbon, we're going to put hyphen, five, hyphen, um, methyl. Five methyl, and then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons, so that's going to be octane. Again, if we're using this table here, eight and octane. So we've got three ethyl, five methyl, octane, and it's in alpha score, E for M, and then we've got octane at the end. Brilliant. Right. So let's go on to this next one. Again, we've got some branching going on here. Um, we have um, we have one, two, three, four. Again, we're going to try and find our longest continuous chain. So if we start from here, we can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that gives us seven. But if you look, actually, this gives the impression that this is a branch. But actually, if we find our longest continuous chain, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Our longest continuous chain is actually this set up here. So this may look like a branch, but actually it's part of the, the core molecule that we're going to start with first. So this has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons in there. So we're just going to number these. And actually our branching is actually this bit here. So this is our branch here. We've got a branch there and we have a branch there. So you can see there's our two branches and this is our longest chain. So we're going to start with the numbering. So if we start from this side, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So three on the third carbon. And the sixth carbon, three plus six is nine. So if we number it from the other side, that's going to give us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now you can see in this case, the numbering from left or down here doesn't make a difference. So it's not going to give us a, too many problems. So I'm just going to number it from this side. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's our different molecule there. Now, actually what we have, is we have two methyl groups that are hanging off different carbon numbers. So where we have identical chains, which we do here, we've got two methyl groups, so these are identical, then we have to use di, tri, or tetra, depending on how many identical groups we've got. Now you can see here that we've got two identical groups, um, and this is hanging off an octane molecule. So in terms of numbering, we have to say that we have two of the same. So this is a bit different. So we're going to start with three. So I'm going to write it down here. So this molecule is three, but we also have another one on the sixth carbon. So actually we bunch these together and we say we've got one on the third and one on the sixth carbon. So that's going to be three comma six dash. We have two methyl groups. So we're going to have di methyl and then eight carbons means octane. So when we have two identical groups, we actually name them 3,6-dimethyl-octane. That gets written on there. Okay, and then the last one that we're going to come on to here is we have, um, again, we try and find our longest chain. In this case, you can see it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbons long. So, um, and then we're going to number it. So we're going to number it again from, because both of these groups here, there's our, there's our chain groups that are hanging off the end there. Because both of these are equally away from there, then we can number it from either side. So we can do one, two, three, four, five. And even if we numbered it from this side, one, two, three, four, five, it would get us the same value. So that doesn't matter. So we see we've got two 
methyl groups that are on there. Um, we then need to write down our actual name of the molecule. Again, we have more than one identical chain, um, but they're hanging off the same carbon. So all we do is we have to say for both of them, three, and we've got to write three again. We can't just write three dimethyl. Um, we've got to write three, three to prove that we actually have two of them. So this is going to be three, three dimethyl because we have two methyl groups and our long chain there is five. So that's pentane, as you can see on here, that's pent. So it's three, three dimethyl pentane. And that would go on there. And that is basically how you would name, um, these are uh, molecules with no functional groups. We have a lot of branching. But you can see the importance of the numbers and things to take away from this is basically you separate numbers with a comma, uh, you separate numbers and letters with a hyphen, and everything else is just one word. So you can see all of these are just big long words. And just watch out for those molecules that may look different on there, but actually are the same thing. And the key thing is to make sure you find the longest continuous chain. So that is the chain where you start your finger on there, you run it along continuously, um, and you count the number of carbons um, without taking your finger off the page or going backwards. So in this case, that's the crucial thing. And once you've got that, actually it's not too bad from that point. But I hope that helps. That's it. Bye.